science has created the ultimate instrument of death, your phone. There's nothing quite like a sinister voice on the other end of the line to ruin your night. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movie phone calls. I'll call you. Ring once, hang up, and then ring again. For this list, we're looking at the scariest and most memorable phone calls in horror movie history and ranking them based on their legacy, scare factor, and importance to the plot and or character. Also, a spoiler alert is now in effect. I'm done arguing with you. Number 10, Baba Duke Duke Duke, The Baba Duke. Claire. Hello? The Babadook is more psychological in nature than most films on our list today, but it still contains its fair share of classic scares. Case in point, the creepy as hell phone call Amelia receives after the Mr. Babadook book is returned to her doorstep. Amelia picks up the phone thinking it's her sister Claire, but it's really the Babadook, who goes on to taunt her with the creepiest voice this side of The Exorcist. The Babadook attacks when Amelia is at her most vulnerable, which is scary in a psychological sense, but that terrifying voice also makes it scary on a primal level. No, 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 we're fine. Samuel's just being very disobedient again. Oh, oh, so I told him not to call anyone. Just imagine picking up the phone and hearing this. Ugh, no thanks. Number nine. She is lying like a get out. Okay, hold on. You lying bitch. She is lying like a mother. I know that. Jordan Peele's directorial debut expertly mixed horror and comedy, and that's no different here. After the African-American Chris suspects there's something weird and possibly sinister up with his Caucasian girlfriend Rose and her family, he tells his friend and TSA agent Rod. After Rod digs into things, he calls to check up on Chris, but he gets Rose instead. What makes this scene so chilling and unforgettable is the juxtaposition of Rod's increasing anxiety with Rose's complete outer calm, contrasted by her feigning ignorance. Hello? Chris? Yo, um, hey, what a, Rose, it's, um, it's, it's me, Rod. Hi. Where's Chris? He left two days ago. Though Rod figures out what's going on, Rose is able to manipulate the conversation so that Rod is left hilariously and disturbingly without the answer he's looking for. I know why you're calling. Why is that? <laughs> it's kind of obvious, don't you think? What? That there's something between us. Number eight. Annie, are you all right? Halloween. <gasps> Hello? Halloween popularized many tropes now common to the slasher genre, including this one, which sees one victim being murdered while on the phone with another character. In this scene, Linda is being strangled while Lori believes it's actually Annie and that her moans of pain are a prank. It's horrifying from both angles. Linda has to hear Lori's unhelpful protestations while she's being strangled to death, and Lori is unknowingly listening to a murder. Are you fooling around again? And while it has nothing to do with the phone call, Michael's ghost costume is just downright blood chilling. Watching him approach Linda is easily one of the movie's most unsettling scenes. And the way he picks up the phone afterwards? Talk about creepy. Number seven, the Mothman sees all. The Mothman prophecies. You lived in a green house on Monroe Street. You don't remember how your mother looked. Okay, you got my attention. The Mothman prophecies pack some incredibly unsettling moments. In this scene, John receives a terrifying phone call in which the mechanical voice on the other end correctly guesses what he's doing, what he's reading, and what's on his mind. The voice and the concept of a mysterious being somehow watching you are extremely unnerving. But the way in which the scene is shot adds another layer to the creepiness. Thank you. Thank you. There are a lot of close-ups on the phone and slow movements towards John's ear and mouth, adding to the growing tension and placing us in John's position, awaiting the next creepy line from this horrifying entity. I've seen you afraid. You're afraid right now, aren't you? Number six, have the lambs stopped screaming? The Silence of the Lambs. Starling, 
while Clarice. Have the lamb stopped screaming? Doctor Lecter. This phone call isn't so much scary as it is just downright awesome. While celebrating her graduation from the FBI Academy, Clarice Starling receives a call from her old pal Hannibal Lecter, who had earlier escaped prison and fled to Bimini. It serves as a great initial ending to Lecter and Starling's strained relationship, as Lecter's friendly nonchalance, his ending the phone call, and the climactic music all signify his victory, despite what Starling may say. Where are you, Dr. Lecter? I have no plans to call on you, Clarice. The world's more interesting with you in it. So you take care now to extend me the same courtesy. You know I can't make that promise. His final line, implying that he's gonna eat Chilton, is also one of the most chilling final lines in movie history. Lecter then walks into the crowd and into history as one of cinema's greatest villains. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Number five, Freddy's Tongue, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Glenn, don't fall asleep. While the A Nightmare on Elm Street series may have gotten a little over the top and silly over the years, the first movie is a bona fide classic due to creepy scenes like this. Just as Nancy is walking away from her bedroom, her disconnected phone starts to ring. The image of the disconnected phone ringing on the bed, coupled with the hair-raising music and Nancy's slow, methodical approach, help to build an incredible amount of tension. We then hear Freddy's voice before his mouth appears at the end of the phone and his tongue licks Nancy's lips. It is a fantastic and wildly unpredictable scare that is sure to get anyone on first viewing. <laughs> Number four, the obscene phone call, Black Christmas. Black Christmas is an underappreciated movie that helped birth the slasher genre. In it, a group of students is murdered after receiving disturbing phone calls from a mysterious man. The phone calls themselves are terrifying, complete with animalistic noises and ragged breathing. Stop. Oh, God. We do not care how tough you are. Receiving a call like that in the middle of the night requires a change of pants. This obscene phone call, however, in which the caller taunts numerous women, is arguably the film's scariest. The language he uses is still disgusting today, but in 1974, no one had heard anything like this in film. This was unprecedented stuff that still has the power to shock. <laughs> Number three, it's coming from inside the house. When a stranger calls. Can you see me? When a Stranger Calls owes a lot to Black Christmas, including the concept of the creepy caller being inside the house the whole time. However, it's probably the most famous example, and one of the calls that arouses the most fear from everyone. After a creepy phone call in which Kurt explains that he wants to kill Jill, Jill receives a phone call from the police explaining that Kurt's calls were coming from inside the house. You trace the call, it's coming from inside the house. A squad car's on the way over there right now. Just get out of that house. The concept of being stalked by someone already in your home is unbelievably terrifying, especially when you realize that Kurt had already murdered the children. What? The line is now iconic, and the scene is arguably one of the scariest opening scenes in horror movie history. Leave me alone! Number two, seven days, the ring. You will die in seven days. And exactly seven days later. The Ring is a perfect example of PG-13 horror done right. There's nothing very violent or crude about this movie. It's just extremely unsettling, and it has the power to truly get under your skin. A perfect example is the scene in which Rachel watches the tape. The footage itself is weird and disturbing enough, but the phone call, in which a mysterious woman whispers, seven days, is even more horrifying. The line is gleefully ominous and full of dread, and it was so popular that seven days became one of the biggest pranks and buzzwords of the early 2000s. Even if you haven't seen the film, you definitely know of the seven days phone call. I thought it was some kind of sick joke. And then the phone rang. Okay, so thanks to horror movies, what can I not do now? Answer the phone, obviously. Um, shower, go camping, ugh. 
Anyway, what could possibly be more iconic than the seven days warning from the ring? Oh, we've got a little something up our sleeve. Wait until after these terrifying honorable mentions to see what's at number one. Why don't you just kill me? Because all guests of this hotel enjoy free will, Mr. Endlin. You can choose to relive this hour over and over, or you can take advantage of our express checkout system. Hello, hello, help us please. Come help us, we're trapped inside of here. Where's the rest of me go? <laughs> Who are you? Hmm. <laughs> Give me back my phone. You're a radio agent. Interviewing a screaming baby coming from Mary Galt's eldest son's last dying gas. at the end yet. Almost there though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number one, playing with Casey, Scream. Listen, asshole. No, you listen, you little bitch. If you hang up on me again, I'll gut you like a fish, understand? <sighs> yeah. Is this some kind of joke? More of a game, really. By the mid-1990s, the slasher genre had fallen out of favor with the public, mostly due to a string of horribly derivative movies in the late 80s and early 90s. However, this scene alone reinvigorated interest in the once-dominant genre. It begins with a mysterious caller flirting with Casey before it devolves into sheer terror and murder. <laughs> Why, you want to ask me out on a date? Maybe. Do you have a boyfriend? Mm, no. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? I want to know who I'm looking at. What did you say? The isolated setting helps to set the helpless tone, the increasingly hostile and persistent phone calls are unsettling, and the image of Casey's body hanging from the tree is now legendary. Though CeCe's sorority house phone conversation in Scream 2 gave us the chills, we will never forget the time that we first watched a big star like Drew Barrymore be killed off so close to the beginning of the original flick. I'm calling the police! <laughs> you should never say who. There, don't you watch scary movies? It's a death wish. You might as well just come out here to investigate a strange noise or something. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.